Hey guys, welcome back. And uh, if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today's video is kind of a hot take comparing Topaz Gigapixel AI, which you may know as a, a really good upsizing and enlarging tool for your photos, comparing that to the brand new Resize AI from On1. Uh, On One is releasing this soon. It's currently still in pre-release mode and the copy I'm using is a pre-release copy, so some things may change. But I've been comparing these two products since I did that video uh, just, uh, I don't know, a few days ago, I guess. And uh, that was about On One Resize AI, talking about how good it is. And the truth is, it's really good. Um, and I've been comparing these two because a lot of people have asked me to, and I was frankly very curious myself. So this is kind of a hot take. It's not a deep dive. I'm not going into depth about every feature and comparing that, but I want to share my experiences so far. Your mileage may vary. If you're interested in either product, there'll be links down below if you would like to check them out and download a free trial. The on one free trial won't be available until it launches, but that's that. Let's get going. I'm uh, starting uh, with this photo, and the reason I'm starting with this photo here is because this is one of the photos I will be showing in this video. This was like 30 seconds uh, in Prague one morning. It's kind of bright because it was a longer exposure. This is a raw file, and I want to point that out specifically, uh, and I wanted you to see the photo unedited in its raw state because when I put it in each product, it on the right hand side here, my right hand side, this might be different for you, but on my right hand side, um, I have on one resize right here. And that's what the photo looks like. On the left hand side, you can see in Gigapixel, it's darker. And I'm seeing that with some raw files in Gigapixel where it is making the photo look darker. I don't know if that's because they don't have the same kind of raw engine or they don't render raw files the same as on one. But if you're not familiar with on one, they have a product called Photo Raw, which is one of the most complete and powerful and flexible, comprehensive, all that kind of stuff. It's a great overall kind of full editor, has amazing raw file handling capability, and I'm sure they're taking advantage of that here in Resize AI. By the way, both of these can work as plugins, both of these can work as standalone. I've got them both in standalone mode today, and Resize will be integrated into On One Photo Raw. And so that's one of the first things I wanted to talk about in this like hot take, if you want to call it that. And that is, uh, there's there's a difference in the product, and it uh, it comes down to price. Gigapixel sells for hundred dollars on their website. Uh, Resize AI, the list price is $100. During pre-order, it's on sale for $60. So there is a price difference right now, but let's call that a wash. Let's pretend they're both regular price, $100. Then you're comparing apples to apples, same kind of idea around the product, same price around the product. However, one of the reasons that my preference is on one, which I'm gonna get to a few more reasons here in a minute, and that is because you could buy Photo Raw, um, which as I just said, is an incredibly powerful and comprehensive editor. They're gonna bundle Resize AI into On One Photo Raw. Photo Raw costs 100 bucks, so you could buy that for 100 bucks, have one of the most powerful editors on the planet, and get Resize basically included, let's say, for free, right? So there's a difference there in terms of how that works. I also wanted to point out that it handles raw files differently. I'm seeing this on lots of different raw files. I'm not seeing it like on a JPEG, which I'll show you in a moment. Uh, one of the other key differences, I've done 4X here in Gigapixel. I also did 400%, which is 4X here in On1. One of the other key differences, though, is that 6X here in Gigapixel is essentially the upper limit, whereas I could come over here and I could type in 900%. Now, watch the pixel dimensions change. They just did. It was 24,000 wide by 16,000. Now it's 54,000 by 36,000. So there's no upper limit uh, per se, at least in on one. So you could theoretically go a lot larger. I will say the quality of the output is going to depend, of course, upon the quality of the input. So a really horrible low res file going in is not going to probably look that great if you make it 54,000 pixels wide. So uh, there, there's a there's an upper limit, uh, if you will, in terms of uh, quality of the output um, based on some of my cursory test, let's call it. Again, not a deep dive, but that just kind of seems logical to me. And I've seen that, trying that with a couple of really small iPhone photos. I can only get them so large before they really start to look like they it was just not a good file to start with. So keep that in mind. Now, another thing that I like about um, Resize AI is that you've got the options here for lots of different things, including megapixels. Over here in Gigapixel, you have scale, which is your percentage, if you will, and then you have width and height if you wanna make those adjustments, but you don't have anything other than that. Whereas over here, you've got you know various options, including megapixels. Um, I'm just gonna leave it on percentage in this one because that is gonna be a straight head-to-head -head comparison, but I wanted to point that out. 
Now, one thing that's interesting about Gigapixel, and I think is a nice feature, is that you have different AI models. They're standard, there's lines, there's other ones here, and you can hover over them if you want, and their tooltips will come up. I'm using lines because it says it's good for architecture and cityscapes, which makes sense for this photo. Uh, there are no additional AI models in on one. There's a single AI model, but again, as I show you in a minute, my results are fantastic. So that hasn't come into play for me, but I wanted to point that out as a difference. You also have settings here that you can suppress noise and remove blur, and why you don't necessarily have that over here in on one, especially if you're using on one photo raw, it includes no noise AI, which is a world-class noise reduction product, and frankly, it works fantastically. If you wanted world-class noise reduction and you're a Topaz user, you'd have to go buy Denoise AI, a separate product that they make. And that's one of the key differences, I think, between the approach here. Topaz is essentially a set of utility plugins. You've got their Sharpen AI, you've got their Denoise AI, you've got Gigapixel AI. So each of these is a round trip to a different plugin and then back to your host. Whereas on one is a fully integrated, complete solution that's gonna include powerful sharpening, as I'll show you in a minute, world-class AI-based Denoise, world-class AI-based enlargement. So another difference and another reason that I like recent size is because I've essentially bought into the idea and I believe in the idea of having a fully integrated editor like on one photo raw. So let's zoom into this photo and I will just take a look here. Let's go, uh, let's not go to 100. Let's go to 50. It's going to be a little bit easier. Let's go to 50 there and I'll go to 50 here and uh, you can just kind of take a look at these. Again, I'm not really sure why it's a little bit darker on the gigapixel side of things, but uh, as you saw in the original photo. It is a brighter photo. Now you can see here, honestly, Gigapixel, the results look great. I, I don't necessarily have a complaint other than it makes the photo look dark. So apart from that though, I think the results look great. It's crisper. It looks nice. And uh, if I go back to the original, you can see it's a little bit softer there. And there it is a little bit crispier. I like that. And same thing over here on the on one side. If I turn preview off, you can see it's slightly less sharp. And now a little bit more, but for me, the big difference comes here when I add sharpening. When I click on that, you can see that that just really crisps it up really nicely. So let me turn off this preview again. You can see the difference more prominently now. There it is before, and there it is now. So you get that extra sharpening, and by the way, that's another thing I like about it. Having this sharpening here, you've got a whole host of options here with their sharpening. This defaulted to high pass, but you've got their progressive sharpening as well as unsharp mask, as well as some settings here to adjust the amount, protect the highlights, shadows, things like that. So lots of capability and flexibility to add the sharpening here in resize that you don't necessarily have in Gigapixel. You can essentially batch process both products. Uh, I've got two photos down here on the left-hand side in Gigapixel, and you can see they're both checked. And so whenever I make this 4X adjustment to this photo, that second photo went up by 4X as well, as you can see down here. Uh, down here on the bottom, it doesn't do it automatically, but you can just highlight that second photo, which, um, whoops, let me click on the first one. Let me highlight the second one. And then all I do is I click sync, and it will apply that enlargement adjustment to that second photo. And if I click over here, you can see now the bottom uh, here on the gigapixel side is 18,000 by 13,000. And same thing, the original here in on one was the 4,600 by 3,400. And now it's the 18,000 by roughly 14,000. So now I'm going to zoom in and this is a JPEG. So I want to take a look at this photo and I want you to see some of the differences in terms of the results. I'm going to zoom into 100 so that you can see this section of the photo. And I'm going to zoom into 100 here as well. And you give it a second and it rebuilds and basically recalculates. And you can see the difference here. Now I'm going to turn off the sharpening. Even without the sharpening, I think it looks better using on one resize AI than it does in Gigapixel. So here in Gigapixel, if I go to the original, you can see it's kind of soft and it does look better. It's frankly an improved photo, even though I enlarged it 4X. And again, this is just a JPEG. Also because it's architecture, I'm sticking with the lines AI model because I think that makes the most sense on this one. But on resize AI, I mean, I think even without the sharpening, it looks crisper. I also feel like there's a little bit more noise present here in the background that I don't see as much of here in on one. And that's even with this automatic setting turned on that says suppress noise. I've done no other noise reduction or even any other edits to this photo. But as soon as I add the sharpening, you can see that this really crisps up quite nicely. And I think these people in the background 
Just honestly, I just think this looks really crisp and sharp overall. And that's another reason why I think on one is giving me better results than Gigapixel because in photos like this, I'm seeing this kind of result, which frankly, I like quite a bit. Couple other things about on one that I think are fairly superior to the way Gigapixel does it. The first one is if you click here, you've got these presets for printing based on what you're gonna be printing on. So powerful, useful, effective utility essentially built in. And then over here in the uh, other side, you've got the print module, which is included and built in to resize the AI. So if you click on that, you can see, let me unselect that photo and I'll select the one that we're on. You can see you've got all these different options built in. So you've got this full print module, including adding a watermark and things like that built in to on one resize AI. So they've thought of that, but that's not the only other thing they've thought of. They've also got a very powerful export menu just like an on one photo raw. So you've got all these different options for exporting as well. The difference being that in Gigapixel, I'm in standalone, so I have the ability to click apply and it will save the photo for me. Doesn't really have a capable or powerful export menu and there's no print module. So again, Gigapixel really designed as a plugin only in my opinion, where you would do a round trip, come back to your host and then export or print from there. Whereas Resize AI, you could take advantage of those capabilities if you're using this product by itself, or again, they're built into On One Photo Raw. And Resize AI, as I think I said at the beginning of the video, will be integrated into On One Photo Raw shortly after launch. I don't know exactly when, but it'll be included. So that's some of the, uh, the key differences that I've noticed. To be clear, I like Gigapixel AI, I like Topaz, I use their products. I'm just doing comparison. Most of the photos that I've been testing, I'm seeing better results in On One than I am in Gigapixel. This is very representative of what I've seen so far. To be clear, I mostly shoot cityscapes and landscapes and not being a portrait photographer, I've not done comparisons on portraits. Maybe it's different. They do have a face refinement model here in Gigapixel that would probably help there. However, in On One Photo Raw, they've got powerful portrait module that allows you to do some really complex portrait edits. And then again, with this built in, you'll be able to do the resizing, the exporting, the printing and all that from one place. So for me, that's what it comes down to. Better results in the enlargement, but also just a more comprehensive approach for let's call it basically the same dollar amount if you get On One Photo Raw or resize AI. I think you just have more overall capability. So that's what I'm seeing so far, my friends. My final opinion is, if you're an On One user, it's a no-brainer to use Resize AI simply because it's gonna be built into On One Photo Raw. There's no point in buying a separate product. If you're a, a Topaz user and you're already using that Gigapixel and that plugin workflow and that sort of thing and it works for you, there's not necessarily a reason to change unless you just really need larger enlargements with that sharpening built in, it may allow you to save the money from buying a different sharpening product if you're sticking with Gigapixel. So moving to On One might give you more capability for less money in that respect. That's my hot take, my friends. I know some people are gonna disagree with me and that's fine. This is just based on my own experience, the kind of photos that I'm shooting, and frankly, my workflow preferences. Both good products overall. Honestly, you can't really go wrong. We're lucky as photographers these days that we have so much capability at our fingertips with these kind of apps. Hope this gives you some ideas. Again, if you're interested in either one, I definitely recommend checking them out at the links below and just downloading a trial to see how it works for you in your own workflow and with your own photos. Your mileage may vary, as I said at the beginning. Hope it helps. Thanks for watching, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll be back soon with more videos. And until then, my friends, adios.